Rust Martin. I'm the Social Services Administrator at Prairie Band Potawatomi uh, Nation Social Services. And I've been here since February of 2022. Before I came here, I spent nearly 15 years um, as the Legal and Policy Director at the Kansas Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence, where I worked on issues around victimization and intimate partner violence on a daily basis. Hi, I'm Audrey England, and I work with the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation as well. I am a part of the Tribal Victim Services, and I am a victim myself, but at the same time, I enjoy this job. I came into it uh, since February 28th, 2022, and I really enjoy what I, what I do for the community and for my peers. We are here to talk to you about um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we're going to try to answer some of the common questions around domestic violence and speak to it specifically uh, related to domestic violence within Native communities, particularly here at Prairie Band Potawatomi. And we're also going to speak to understanding why we still have a Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So we're going to cover all of that uh, with you today. So what is domestic violence? This is a term that is used um, frequently by a lot of different people in a lot of different systems. And I think everybody thinks we're operating under the same definition, but often we're not. Uh, so one of the first things we like to do when we uh, come together to talk about it is just to make sure we're all sort of operating under the same definition. Yes. So when we say domestic violence, um, a lot of people think of the criminal system, the, the legal system, and that is true. Domestic violence is a crime if it's an act of physical or threatened act of physical violence. Um, but inside of the advocacy community, we also operate under a bit of a different definition, and that is a pattern of abusive or coercive behavior aimed at gaining or maintaining power and control and domination over an intimate partner. Yes. So some of those behaviors that lead to that domination and control are criminal and are things that the criminal code covers, whether tribal code or any other state or federal statute, but a lot of what happens in domestic violence has, is not covered by the criminal, any criminal code. Right. And so we have to uh, look at kind of what is the impact of different behaviors on the victim, what type of control is being used. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of financial control, mm -hmm. um, a lot of other um, economic issues. There's a lot of isolation, yes. a lot of a person blaming the other person for everything that happens or everything that goes wrong. So there's a lot of things that go into um, domestic violence mm -hmm. that uh, won't show up in some sort of criminal system. Yes. Yes. So the next thing we want to talk about is um, domestic violence within Native communities, particularly Native women. And um, what is, I think, striking when you look at statistics is that Native women have the highest rates yes. of physical victimization than any other group mm -hmm. in the United States. And um, what we identify with that is that that makes our services um, critical. Yes. But the other thing is that if you don't look kind of behind the numbers and if you just look at that statistic itself, it can lead you to an idea that um, domestic violence is perpetrated in Native communities mm -hmm. against Native women by Native men. Mm -hmm. And that's not actually accurate. Um, a lot of the victimization that Native women experience is at the hands of other men, um, men from other uh, racial or ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. So it's important to sort of know the facts so we know what we're talking about. Just as it's important to know the definition, it's important to know and understand what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. So Native women do experience higher rates of victimization, but again, that doesn't mean that Native men commit higher rates of victimization. Yes. The power and control wheel is something that we use both in terms of our education for communities, uh, community members, other professionals, but we also use it with victims to help victims identify what it is they've experienced in the relationship and why that might be abusive. Um, so uh, the way that the power and control wheel came out, and I'm talking about the general power and control wheel because what, what you'll realize mm -hmm. in being around domestic violence is we love a wheel. Um, and so, um, in, when we're talking about the, the main wheel that is used to sort of describe 
uh, what domestic violence looks like, that came out in the 1980s. Um, groups in Minnesota went to domestic violence shelters, started to talk to victims of all different types of victims, and what they walked away with were a set of behaviors, a set of actions, a set of tactics, yes. if you will, that victims experienced at the hands of abusers. So every victim had a unique story, but there were similarities amongst every single victim. And what they did is they took those main themes or those main areas and they broke it down and they put it onto the spokes of the wheel. Mm. Um, and so what we're talking about here is we're talking about intimidation, we're talking about physical violence, sexual violence, we're talking about um, diminishing or sabotaging someone's parenting, we're talking about using the children against their mother or a victim, we're talking about financial abuse and exploitation. So we're talking about a lot of different pieces that go together, that all together make up uh, the power and control that happens in a relationship. So it doesn't happen because one thing happens. It happens because all of this is used together mm -hmm. and then the result is that one partner ends up with all the power and control in a relationship and the other partner doesn't. That's right. There's a fear, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a fear that um, that an outside yes. organization system that's it. entity yep. is going to come in and then they are going to make assumptions exactly. about what is happening in that home or yep. what what type of parent oh, that yes. native woman is mm -hmm. or uh, what that person what or even about the native man That's if right. there is a native man mm -hmm. what they're going to make assumptions about what is leading to the violence and I think yeah. Um, I think that's a fear, and that's a very real fear mm -hmm. that many Native women carry is, I want help, but yes. I don't want to have to go out mm. into a system that doesn't understand me that's or respect me that's right. or want to. Mm -hmm. These Native women are going through more than any other race of women that I've known, and to hear their voice behind the doors, behind the scene, we want them to come forth. We want them to come out of the shadows and be able to have a voice to, so we can hear and fix the problem at hand. That's a very real fear. Yes. And that is also why I think us having tribal victim services is mm -hmm. so essential. Yeah. Because we're talking about a system that is here, yes, that is right. created for the women of this community right. and the men. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. we, we, we want to be really clear. Mm -hmm. Two-spirited individuals, mm -hmm. LGBTQ, yeah. men, women, we know that this happens across the board. So That's we're right. not trying. We do gender. And the reason that we gender is because statistically women are victims more often. That's right. But just like in the case of breast cancer, right, mm -hmm. where we have breast cancer awareness and a lot of times you see women's pictures, it doesn't mean that a man can't be a victim of breast cancer, right? Can't that's right. Um, be diagnosed, and the same is true for domestic violence. So we recognize that it can happen across the board, but we do gender our terminology, and I think yeah. it's important to understand why. So a lot of times when we talk about domestic violence and the word violence is in the definition, and again, this is a term that is used as kind of a term of art for us yeah. who are doing the work or who are in the criminal system or who are in, um, part of a system. We have to take a whole set of behaviors and we have to put language to it. And so that's why you get this term domestic violence. We see violence mm -hmm. way beyond physical violence, and I think that's really important to, to put, put out there, and that is that you can have emotional violence, mm -hmm. you can have uh, spiritual violence. That's there right. are all forms of violence that happen between mm -hmm. people um, and that that is the work we're really trying to to help mitigate but yeah. also to That's help right. heal. That's right. Um, and it's about finding resources but it's also about getting people connected to the support that they need. That's right. Um, to their community, mm -hmm. um, to maybe an elder or someone else who can provide the support that this person needs to move into that next stage. But, um, but violence is very much considered in our work to be a whole host of behaviors right. that are destructive to the humanity of a person. That's right, yeah. All of those are forms of abuse, but at the same time, it's the violent act that is performed within those abuse. It's an ongoing thing that's happening in these relationships, whether you're married, dating, you know, digital is something where, you know, you have a partner that takes control of your phone, of your life, basically, of telling you, this is what you're gonna do at this time, and this is where you're gonna be at this time, and give me your phone, let me see what you, who you're calling, who you've been around. 
digital. Certain, it's electronic. It's, it's more of a taking your stuff into his or her hands and making it theirs. And you're just, you're being controlled. But and when we talk about the violent state and I go through with, you know, each client that I have, it's so different. Every case is different, but at the same time, every case is special because we as advocates, we have to find out how we're going to go to help, where we're going to take them, what we're going to do mentally, physically, emotional, spiritually. We got to add all that up. It's all going to come to one and to the forefront of we need to fix each one of those areas. So you hear violence here, violence there. You know, it's a harsh word, but it's true. These Native women, they're going through a lot of stuff behind the shadows and we don't even see it. But we know we just got to find a way to come to the forefront to help these women. Now we want to talk a little bit about Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yes. It's October. It's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, if you didn't know. It is an important month that happens annually. Mm -hmm. And um, every year we come out with different events and um, activities for yes. the community. Mm -hmm. So this month we had uh, Walk a Mile in Their Mocks. We've had Movie Night in the, the Park, park yes. where we did some awareness mm -hmm. building. We are having splatters that matter. Yeah. Um, and we're doing some legislative uh, advocacy, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily with legislators, but just at the state house mm -hmm. um, with other advocates um, yes. in the area and in the region. So I think a lot of people, though, probably wonder do we need a Domestic Violence Awareness mm -hmm. Month? I mean, the Violence Against mm -hmm. Women Act was first passed in 1994. The problem is, is that we still have such high rates. That's right. And so uh, we here at TVS recognize that what we need to do as well, while VAWA has allowed different funding streams to come out right. and intervention, meaning after the abuse has happened, mm -hmm. the things that we can do to help a victim, mm -hmm. those services have really improved in the last 30 so, years, yes. tremendously. But what we haven't been able to really sustain or even, I think, build to an adequate place is the sense of prevention services. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what are, we are, what are we doing inside of our communities that is respectful and also aware of our community? And what are we doing to really help people understand the issue here, yes. locally? Yes. Um, and that's prevention. Mm -hmm. And that happens in schools yeah. with kids talking about healthy masculinity, right. healthy relationships. It happens in our homes. Mm -hmm. It happens in um, our spiritual, um, groups, it happens all across the board, right? And yeah. we have to be able to have more of these conversations and do more awareness building. Yes. So it may feel like it's been 30 years, but with the numbers still so high, um, especially in regards to Native women, mm -hmm. um, there's much more to be done. Yes, right. and, yes. and we've taken it on and uh, we definitely want to keep um, empowering the community to step in. Yes. Because in connection with prevention, prevention is an essential part of this. We've got to be talking, particularly to young people, right. about what a healthy relationship looks like and doesn't. Yes. Because right. you would not believe how many young women I have heard, for instance, mm. um, just to give one example, talk about how, um, well, he wants me to call him as soon as I get there. Mm. Um, because he worries about me. He wants to know where I am all the time because he he's just worried that something's going to happen mm -hmm. to me, right? And these are red flags, yes, right? These is. are big indicators of jealousy and control. Mm -hmm. um, but for young people who don't have a lot of experience, they can see this as love. That's right. um, yeah. And we have to help folks understand That's within right. our families, within our mm -hmm. extended families, within yes. our within our community uh, what love looks like, yes. what love f should feel like, yes, right. how respectful love should be, mm -hmm. how honoring of the sacred of the woman, yeah. how honoring of the humanity and the, um, the sacred of humanity. We have to be able to have those conversations and really further those um, beliefs. Yes, and then the other side is accountability. Yes. And um, so when, when we first opened the podcast and talked about the difference between the advocacy sort of definition of domestic violence and the criminal definition, a lot of times accountability uh, in this country has come in the form of criminal justice system. Yes, right. And if there isn't the criminal justice system involvement, then there, there hasn't 
necessarily been a lot of accountability. That's right. Um, but we know that Native communities hold each other accountable in a variety of ways, and that has to continue to happen here as yes. we're talking about domestic violence. That's right. So we need we need uncles, brothers, cousins to come alongside somebody who is struggling with using power and control in a relationship and talk about respect and yeah. humility and what it means uh, to be a, a Native man. Yeah, that's right. And we need uh, women to come along and, and help that woman be empowered in her uh, in her sacred essence um, as a Native woman right. um, in a supportive way. Yes. And then we also have to just hold each other accountable for the things that we do right. and help each other t teach in the teachings um, of the Native way, but also in helping to learn that That's right. um, with patience and grace, but also mm -hmm. consistency yes. and nice. making sure that these lessons are, are not lost right. um, as generations pass on. That's right. We also just want to encourage you as a member of the community mm -hmm. to um, create and make sure that victims, who anyone, we don't know who victims are. That's right. And oftentimes, I mean, how often do we hear uh, folks say, like, if I'd have known that was happening, mm -hmm. if I'd have known yeah. that this was going on, if I'd have known this, well, the thing is, is we have to create a space that allows someone to share that with us. That's right. We have to create it so that people will tell us, mm -hmm. and then we have to respond accordingly. That's right. So if someone tells us they're being victimized, we have to believe them. That's right. Mm -hmm. If someone tells us that they are putting their hands on their partner or that they are controlling their partner, we have to not only believe them, but then we have to do something with that. That's right. Right? Yes. Um, and so... It's really about how do we each, each of us, sort of bear the burden and responsibility um, for creating that space mm -hmm. around us and also in a larger sense within the community that creates both support for victims mm -hmm. and accountability yes. for those who may be using abusive tactics. And that's what DVAM is. Mm -hmm. DVAM is about incre increasing awareness around that. So not just understanding what is domestic violence, mm -hmm. but about the, the areas that we still need to grow and develop and change and, and move toward in our communities around creating support and accountability mm -hmm. uh, for all of our members. That's right. So one way that we can create support <laughs> for victims um, and accountability for users here at Prairie mm -hmm. Van Potawatomi Nation mm -hmm. is that you can reach out to our tribal victim services. If you have someone you think maybe we will screen, we will help figure out whether they qualify for our services, yes, but just make those referrals, yes. have them give us a call. We would rather you send everyone to us and us have to kind of uh, work through that mm -hmm. than have someone not come to us because they think they won't qualify and then right. um, us not get them some help. And, and support that they need. So yeah. the number to call for TVS is 888-966-0173. And you can call that 24-7 and we will respond to your needs.